Cities that may be lost by 2050. Hey everyone, it is Alexa again and welcome back to another video. Global warming, or climate change, is on the rise. The increasing temperature of the Earth's climate system not only determines our weather patterns, but even the existence of the places we live. Here are some places in the world that may disappear in the next century. New York City In all the blockbuster disaster movies, New York is the city that is hit with a monster storm, alien invasion, or crazy comet first. So it's probably not shocking that New York would be on this list. A study from 2013 showed that New York's sea levels would rise 4 to 8 inches by the 2020s. From 1971 to 2000, New York had an average of 19 days per year where temperatures reached 90 degrees Fahrenheit. However, after the 2020s, that number could rise to 33 days. In the 2050s, it could could be up to 57 days. Miami. If you've never been to Miami, Florida, go now because this place might be gone forever. Sea levels here are over a foot higher than they were 100 years ago. Miami-Dade County is at risk for losing $15 billion worth of coastal property in the next 15 years. Seasonal tides, called king tides, can add up to 12 inches to average waves, leading Miami Beach to flood during super tidal events and big storms regularly. If Miami falls victim to climate change, over 2.7 million people will be affected. Hong Kong. Of all the regions in the world, Asian cities may be the worst affected. One of those areas includes Hong Kong. This autonomous territory is located in southeastern China and has a population of 7.392 million. Global warming could lead Hong Kong to experience longer, hotter summers and virtually no winter. According to the Climate Change Business Forum, there will be less than one cold day a year, which is defined as 53 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, by the 22nd century. Boston. Hurricane Sandy happened six years ago, and it was one of the most significant storms to hit the east coast of the U.S. in a long time. Scientists warn that a storm surge like that could be the new normal. Had Sandy reached Boston during high tide, 6.6% of the city would have been flooded. By 2050, this could be happening half the year. By 2100, flooding may occur twice a day. Osaka. At least 5.2 million people will be affected by the massive flooding in Osaka if climate change isn't slowed down. To protect a huge commercially prosperous hub like Osaka means Japan needs to spend a lot of money. Nearly $1 trillion of the region's assets will be at risk by 2070. City authorities also stress that not only is money going towards the construction of the infrastructure to protect Osaka, but funding should also go towards public education so that people know how to respond to the inevitable change. Atlantic City. The rest of the world doesn't think of Atlantic City as a place other than to have fun. However, Atlantic City may not be around too much longer. Atlantic City is a coastal community in New Jersey, and those are the types of places that are at the most risk from rising sea levels. In 2017, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers already spent tens of millions of dollars to build a sea wall to reduce storm surge and flooding in the city's downtown area. Alexandria. You don't need to have visited Egypt to know that high temperatures here are already the norm, but scientists predict average temperatures rise up 3 degrees Fahrenheit in the next 40 years. As for rainfall, Egypt looks like it will be drier in the coming years, reducing agricultural productivity up to 20%. Charleston. Charleston, South Carolina already faces strong storms annually, yet the high levels of carbon emissions may bring in more severe hurricanes. More hurricanes leads to more problems. Oyster populations will plummet, and that isn't just bad news for people who like to eat oysters. Less of these shellfish means there won't be any animals left to filter feed and clean Charleston's water. Galapagos. One of the most biologically diverse places in the world is in danger of losing many of its unique plants and animals. The Galapagos Islands were a major focal point in Charles Darwin's studies. The once vibrant green coral is now victim to coral bleaching because of the increasingly warm water. Animals are starving. Iguanas must scavenge the shore for algae to eat. Sharks and other fish are catching more infections from the higher numbers of barnacles on the rocks. Much of what made the Galapagos amazing is now fading out of existence. Honolulu. Hawaii is known for its tropical weather and beautiful waters. More water may not seem like a huge issue at first, but just a one-inch increase in sea levels means Honolulu's shoreline will move eight feet more inland. A one-foot rise in sea level will drive the shore 100 feet more inland. Fort Lauderdale. 
back to Florida. The Sunshine State is the most at-risk area in the United States when it comes to flooding and climate change. Fort Lauderdale is located 30 miles north of Miami, and even that much distance isn't enough to save it from Miami's fate. By 2060, Fort Lauderdale will most likely be locked in by the sea if we don't reduce greenhouse gas emissions the Dead Sea. Between the borders of Jordan and Israel is the famous Dead Sea, named so because organisms cannot inhabit the water thanks to its high salt content. The Dead Sea is a prominent tourist spot for Jordan and Israel. Many people flock from all over the world to visit, hearing about the sea's healing aspects and to float without any worry of sinking. However, scientists say that in the next 35 years, the Dead Sea will be but a distant memory. San Diego. San Diego is LA's more relaxed, less dense cousin. It's a place that captures that chill and relaxed vibe of Southern California. What's not chill about it is that San Diego's tides have been climbing and will reach 18 inches to four feet by 2050. Waters will take over most of downtown, nearly submerging the Petco Park Stadium. Kiribati. This island republic can be found in the Central Pacific, in between Australia and South America. It's pretty isolated out there in the ocean. It's part of Micronesia and consists of 33 coral islands. Rising sea levels are more apparent here than other places because Kiribati is so small. Only 100,000 people live here, yet people are already leaving for New Zealand to avoid the eventual disappearance of their home. New Orleans. Hurricane Katrina was a disaster that New Orleans is still recovering from. Some experts believe the state of Louisiana may have the highest sea level rise compared to everywhere else in the world. The Big Easy sits at a shallow sea level, and it is already sinking. By the end of the 21st century, the Gulf of Mexico will surround the city. Mount Kilimanjaro. This iconic landscape in Tanzania has an elevation of 19,341 feet. Sure, we don't necessarily have to worry about sea levels drowning out this mountain, but we should fear that 85% of the ice that covers the highest peak in Africa is now gone. It's predicted that the glacier will remain on the mountain until 2020, and that's only a year away. The Maldives. Big cities around the world are riddled with pollution. Secluded islands like the Maldives are beloved because of the cleaner environment and pleasant temperatures. It goes to show that climate change does not discriminate. The Maldives is a low-lying area. To get the point across that it's facing the danger of disappearance, the president and his cabinet held a press conference that was underwater, and that was in 2009. The Hague. The Hague is a city in the Western Netherlands. Its inner court complex serves as the seat of the Dutch parliament. Last year, the government ordered an increase in carbon emission cuts to fight against global warming. The Hague will be one of the most affected of the cities in Europe should the looming disasters of global warming ensue. The sea levels here would rise 8.2 to 9.8 feet by 2100. Sacramento. Wouldn't coastal cities in Northern California like San Francisco and Oakland be more at risk in regards to the increase of water compared to Sacramento? The answer is yes, but the effects of the rising ocean would be so harmful that it would also affect an inland city like Sacramento. Should the flow of the Sacramento River rise by just two feet, that could spell trouble for many neighborhoods. Venice. There's not a place quite like Venice anywhere else in the world. The city was built on the water as opposed to next to it. Streets need bridges to cross to the other side. Gondolas float by next to people taking a stroll on the pavement. This canal city is flooding at record-breaking levels and has been sinking for a long time now. This past fall, over 70% of the town was overpowered by water as a storm laid down heavy rain and pushed seawater closer. The highest category of floods ever recorded beforehand was between 2000 in 2013, it's estimated that Venice will sink in the next century. Rio de Janeiro, say goodbye to Copacabana. If the temperature continues to rise in Brazil, the tourist favorite beach will be no more. Compared to everywhere else in South America, experts predict Rio de Janeiro will be the worst affected. The more heat waves and floods, the more likely diseases will occur and the more easily they will spread. The average temperature will rise just one degree Celsius in 2020, and that is more than enough to cause significant concern for one of the most densely populated cities in the world. Los Angeles, another coastal California city in danger of being submerged in water, is also one of the biggest cities in the world. The sea level has risen seven inches in the 20th century and even more since then. Between 1981 and 2000, the average temperature rose by 4.3 degrees Fahrenheit. The Pacific Ocean may soon engulf the sandy coastlines we're so familiar with, including places like Santa Monica, Venice Beach, and Long Beach. Whether you've visited LA yourself or you've seen the skyline in photos, you've most certainly 
noticed that curtain of smog that occasionally covers everything. Because of the dense population and amount of vehicles, pollution has become a major problem for LA. A place that was recently recovering from a terrible drought may also face extreme flooding. Before we reveal number one, we've got a question. What place would you travel to immediately if you knew it would disappear soon? Let us know your future vacation spots in the comments below. Shanghai. Over 24 million people live in the global financial hub that is Shanghai. According to a study published in 2012, Dutch and UK scientists determined that Shanghai will be the most vulnerable city in the world in terms of flooding. A large portion of Shanghai's population lives right next to the water. Flooding of an extreme magnitude would displace over 17.5 million people. The city has already begun construction on flood prevention walls near the shore. In some parts, the wall is so high that you can't see the water on the other side. Wow.